Judith Leister, famed, forgotten, and rediscovered. Judith Leister was a Dutch Golden Age painter. She painted genre scenes, portraits, and still lives. She is best known for her small-scale, intimate genre scenes. Most remarkably, she was recognized in her time as a skilled and talented painter. She found success in a field that was dominated by men. Her patrons were Dutch citizens and groups. There was a growing merchant class in the Dutch Golden Age, meaning the patrons of art were now not limited to the church and state. Training and influences. Few documents survive about how Leicester trained as an artist, thus very little is known or certain about her training. She may have studied under Franz Pertres de Greber, another Dutch Golden Age painter known for his portraits and landscapes. They are mentioned in some texts together. Stylistically, she is also intertwined with her contemporary Franz Hals. Stylistically, they were very similar, especially their free and spontaneous brushwork. They also had similar subjects and compositions with genre scenes of multiple figures and children merrymaking. Though there are no documents to confirm that she actually worked under Hals, historians surmise that she did so around the 1620s due to the similarities between their works. It was common practice for painters under master painters to learn through copying, and Leicester's painting The Jester bears a resemblance to Hals' painting Lute Player. Her husband was also a pupil of Hals. Leicester also shows influences of the Utrecht Caravaggisti style. Three Dutch painters had traveled to Rome, and when they returned to Utrecht, they brought back the painting style of Caravaggio that they had witnessed in Rome. And this was evolved into what became as the Utrecht Caravaggisti style. Characteristics of this style include dramatic lighting effects. These are often of indirect artificial sources, like candles and lanterns. This kind of lighting is common in Leicester's paintings. The way Leicester tends to keep a background plain and her subjects dramatically lit is also reminiscent of Caravaggio's style. Styles and themes of Leicester's paintings. One of her most famous paintings is her self-portrait. The self-portrait shows Leicester's exceptional skill in painting with its detail and precision and perspective. And indeed, the purpose of this painting was a self-promotional tactic. Leicester portrays herself well-dressed, with painter tools in hand. Her smiling expression and relaxed pose defy the painting convention at the time. Women at this time were usually depicted in serious scenes, um, but in this particular self-portrait, Leicester is in a relaxed pose and she is asserting that she is a confident, skilled artist with status and recognition. The painting that she paints in her painting demonstrates her specialty subject, which is uh, genre scenes. So within this one self-contained painting, she shows that she is very skilled both in portraiture and in genre paintings. Her brushwork is characterized by a spontaneity that matches this confident attitude that she is trying to portray. Leicester is undeniably very skilled in crafting light and shadow, as evident in one of her most famous paintings, Boy Playing Flute. She often paints from a lower viewpoint. She usually has her subjects glancing upwards, and they are bathed in a light that is... Usually the source is not in view of the painting. Leicester also had a great love of music. Many of her paintings depict themes with musical instruments. In this next painting titled The Concert, you can see this theme of music. Leicester's husband is holding a violin on the left. A family friend is holding a lute on the right. And Leicester herself is in the middle holding a songbook. It's a scene of three people having a merry time together, enjoying some music and harmony. Leicester and her husband may have been musicians as well as artists. The style of the plain background is contrasted with these well-articulated figures, and this style is sort of reminiscent of Caravaggio. Leicester demonstrates the wonderful technique of rendering the figures and instruments, both in proportion and perspective. As you can see in the lute, it's uh, painted foreshortened and painted in perspective. 
the three figures each gaze towards different areas of the painting. Um, this is something that's commonly found in her paintings as well, which gives her painting is more of like a dynamic feel. This last painting I'd like to discuss is titled The Proposition. It is also one of her most famous works. It is a painting of a woman who works by candlelight. She's trying to get her work done while a man is pestering her with coins in his hand. So really he's asking for sexual favors. The subject of courtesans was very common at the time, especially among the Caravaggisti. Leicester subverts all the conventions of this time by posing the woman in the proposition as dignified and uninterested in the man's advances, and it is a statement against the notion at the time that women were temptresses. It was incredibly remarkable for women in her time to make a livelihood out of professional painting, especially when she did not hail from an artist's family. At the time, Dutch painters were also part of guilds where trade skills were developed, transferred, and closely guarded. Leicester made history as the first registered woman of the Harlem's Guild of St. Luke in 1633 when she was only 24. Even more remarkable, she opened her own workshop with three students studying under her. However, after she died, she was completely forgotten. No work was attributed to her. Instead, her work was often misattributed to male painters, namely her contemporary Franz Hals, who she shared a similar style to, and also to her husband. Because when she married her husband, they worked together by sharing materials and a studio, and it is often noted that she produced fewer paintings after being married and having five kids. However, it could be that she collaborated with her husband more after marriage, thus she produced fewer paintings of her own. Leicester was finally rediscovered in 1893 by a historian when a painting was sold and its authenticity was questioned. It had the false signature of Franz Hals, the historian had the painting cleaned, and there it was. On the corner of the painting was a signature star monogram, and this was the clue that an unearthed Leicester. Her monogram is a play on her last name, Leicester, which means leading star, and she writes her monogram with her initials and a shooting star to the right. Hopefully, her name will stand bright once again.